The name that God would mention is actually Cyrus. So we're going to look at the power of the lion a little bit more over here through Persia. We're going to look at the four Persian kings. As we cover these four Persian kings, we're going to cover the first one, so which is an obvious mention, and that is Cyrus. Cyrus the Great was very, very important that the Lord mentioned him several times in the Bible. We're going to look at Ezra chapter 4 and verse 6 in the reign of Ahasuerus. Okay, so that's the first one we want to look at. So Ahasuerus, okay. The second one we'll be covering is Artaxerxes. And the third one will be Darius. All right, now, in Ezra chapter 4, verse 6, we see that uh, Ahasuerus is mentioned. If you might recall, the Lord used Cyrus where the nation of Israel were able to return to their homeland. So now let's see, uh, let's get back to the nation of Israel a little bit here. The nation of Israel, they were under uh, captivity of Babylon. And it was under Babylonian captivity that the Lord gave prophecies about the Gentile kingdoms, which we looked at. So he gave that to uh, Daniel. And then he mentioned about a lot of end times, his uh, end times prophecy to both Daniel and Ezekiel. And then the minor prophets where your other books of the Bible came out, they were there where they were motivating the Jews to keep rebuilding. And they were also prophesying about end times. Now, while Israel was building its temple, its city, and its walls, Ezra and Nehemiah were the two primary people that were responsible for helping with that one. And then Esther was the primary person the Lord used to protect the people. So there were three important people. that. So you notice that the Lord used a lot of important people in Israel where they can keep the job going. He used the minor prophets where they would be able to encourage the nation of Israel to rebuild and uh, warn them about God's judgment and end times. He used the major prophets as well to predict about what would happen in the Gentile satanic kingdoms as well as the end time kingdoms as well. And then he also gave them people to help them in their rebuilding of a nation through Ezra and Nehemiah. And then he used Esther, a woman, to protect the entire people, to in protect the entire nation over there. So the Lord will use anyone for his glory, as you might notice. Now, this was the book of Ezra. We see that the Jews are facing resistance in rebuilding their nation. And then here are the Persian kings involved. Verse 6 is the reign of Ahasuerus. Verse 7, the days of Artaxerxes. Now look at the last verse in the chapter. Verse 24, then cease the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem, so it cease unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And then you see Darius mentioned again at, verse, at chapter 5, verse 6. Chapter 5 and verse 6. Now, look, compare that with Daniel chapter 11. Here's how God will lay out the historical format. He lays out the historical format, which is why India will finally get some kind of mention. Persia, Greece, Rome, etc., etc. This is how it all lays out throughout our history. Now that we talked about how Satan formed these kingdoms, let's see how they line up now, how God would give the history. Verse 1, Also I in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now I will now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet what? Three kings in Persia. And the four shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength through the, his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. All right. Notice that God he mentions three kings over here. But then he mentions a fourth which would be greater than them all. Cyrus is obviously has been mentioned throughout the Bible, so we don't have to mention him. But God's talking about future, the future kings now, 
after Cyrus. So who are they? These are the ones in Ezra chapter 4 and chapter 5. We see their, their, their names over here, Ahasuerus, Artaxerxes, Darius. Now I mention names, but I say that uh, very loosely, and I'll explain why a little later on. We have to also cover the critics' arguments against the Bible throughout world history, as I will be pointing it out later on over here. So, the first thing you've got to understand is that these so-called names are not actual names. A lot of times the Bible, when it would use names, this is common throughout the Bible. A lot of times God would give them a name that He sees as a name. For example, Jesus' name is Jesus, but that's not his only name. The Bible says in Matthew that his name shall be called Emmanuel. How about that? God said that his name was what? Jealous. How about that? So you got to understand this, that in the Bible, when it mentions names, God can make up multiple kinds of names. So this is God where he puts the names in there. Why? Because a name has a meaning. So God picks which names he likes that suits the meaning of the person. You need to understand that argument, which will be very, very useful in the future. This is a spiritual book. So as a spiritual book, it will give you the names that God, the Holy Spirit, will deem as fitting. Another thing you've got to understand is that it was common during the times of people where rulers would take the names of other rulers as their titles. For example, the Herods. We see so many Herods in the Bible, but because that name is a common, uh, is a powerful name that they want to adapt and use, they keep using it. Just like how I talked to you a long time ago in our discipleship, the Pharaohs. Why is that? Because uh, the Pharaohs is a very uh, powerful wording where people will look at you as a ruler. So that's why they would use the Pharaoh name as well. Uh, this is common even in uh, history uh, just a couple centuries ago where they would go King Henry the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. King George, one, two, etc., etc. Why? Because these names uh, bring up power. A good example is a uh, Christian University, Bob Jones, right? So they like that, so then Bob Jones, one, two, and three. But aside from that fact, so sometimes people, they will take the names because of the, the people they admire, admire or powerful people. So name, uh, the Persian king's names can be titles, but they can also be alternative names. And alternative names, not just how God sees it, but even historically that time. That was very, very common. It was very, very common for people to uh, have alternate names. And these alternative names can be very, very common. Now, this is a confusion here, all right? The confusion is, we're going to talk about this and we're going to come back to over here. When Cyrus took over, the Bible says that Darius was the one who began to rule. Now, this Darius is different from this other Darius here. You see that? I put this next to the beginning of the kings over here, not the one, two, three, four, etc. So this Darius is way over here. Why? Because it's not just Persia that took over. It's what? Needs. Now, look at, look at your Bible. Look at Daniel chapter 9. Keep your hand at Daniel 11. Go to Daniel 9, 1. Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. The Bible says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the what? Needs. Okay, now look at that over there. So this Darius, who, uh, who took over with Cyrus, was, uh, he was given that name, the Bible says, and he was of the seed of Medes. Historians don't see that, secular lost liberal historians. They see that all the way to later Persian kings, and they call him Darius I. So then by labeling him as Darius the first, they said, we don't know of a Darius from the seed of Medes, especially during the time of Cyrus, there's no record. So they say that the book of Daniel, that's why that in order to prove his prophecy, Daniel had to take the later uh, Darius Persian king, which was likely that time. So, Darius, so Daniel took that Darius's name, 
combined it with the Medes during that time to show that he's a prophet and the prophecy is fulfilled. Okay, you know what's so stupid about that? That's very stupid. One, Daniel, when he wrote the book, Darius already uh, took, this Darius already took over the kingdom, okay? And then he recognized that he's from the Medes. Why would he mention that, Darius from the Medes, when anyone can disprove him that time? That's really stupid. These intellectual scholars, they are actually stupid when you think about it. Yeah. It's, okay, anyway, I'm not going to keep name calling them. I, you know when I get on scholars, right? I go like five minutes pounding them really hard. All right, now, anyways, uh, let's skip whatever the scholar said. We already saw the arguments over here. The arguments is it was common where they had common t uh, alternative names or titles. And not only that, how God deemed them as a name. As a matter of fact, Ahasuerus, that's not, uh, they, scholars have a far, hard time finding that kind of name throughout any Persian king. That's proof over there that the Lord, when he gives that kind of name, he gives according to his name that he wants. Because each name has a meaning, you got to understand. So... The Lord, he sees these Persian kings as Ahasuerus, 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 and he'll mention him multiple times with multiple Persian kings. Why? Because he sees them as that title, as a king of kings, so to speak, or a, a wide ruler, so to speak. So that's the reason why. Names were very, very common that people used, and that's, and that's proven throughout the Bible. For example, Judas... Another one is Mary, another one is John. So, so there were names that were very common that time. This is the trick of these liberal scholars. This is how I see it as. They tricked you that there's no Darius the Mede long time ago because they labeled him as Darius the First. Correct. Ah, by putting that, then you assume there was no Darius for the past 1,000 years of history. No one was named Darius. <laughs> If you look up the word Darius, you know what the first Darius they pull up? Was a Darius much later. Darius the first. That's a trick. See that? That's Satan trick. And that's only that intellectual scholars would just uh, make you want to kick them, man. Because, see, the, it's a, the educational system is all a trick how they deceive you unconsciously. They create the rules without you knowing it. And it's all historical, too. What they give is historical arguments too, so then, uh, but it's done in an unconscious trick setup that, that's very clev clever, Darius the first, etc. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is, this, okay, but anyways. So, forget them, okay? There were people who are named, oh, come on, you're telling me d this was, the, the very first guy that was named Darius was the Darius uh, that was much later, that was much later before the Darius in the book of Daniel? You're telling me for 1,000 years no one was named Darius. Now, grow up, man. Get a life, man. Get a life, man. This is idiocy at its finest, okay? So remember that argument. That's going to be very, very helpful when you uh, debate with scholars, especially concerning world history. That's a trick, man. Now, okay, to be fair with the historians, it is accurate to put it as... Uh, Darius the first, so to speak, because that's, because that's the first time that it's mentioned in history, in Persian tablet form, so to speak, where this would be a first Darius as a Persian king. However, you got to realize that the Bible text is also a history text. They don't count that as part of the Persian inscription, Persian tablets, ar archaeological findings. How God saw it as is that this guy's name is Darius. Because why? God sees it that way. Not only that, you're telling me that this Darius later on didn't admire this other Darius and probably took that name for himself later on, or the family took that name? Now use your head. It's just as common as John and Mary, etc. So Darius the Mede, you'll notice at chapter 9, verse 1, it says, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Ah, so he had dominion over Babylon but he was made king yeah. that's important that proves the Bible over here Medes and Persian this doesn't debunk the Bible no this actually proves the Bible because uh, if you look at chapter 6 and the very last verse of chapter 6 notice how God worded that 
verse 28. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and what? In the reign of who? Cyrus the who? Persian. Persian. But Daniel saw the Medes over here. And it is historically proven that uh, they, used a, uh, they used a Median ruler to take care of the Babylonian region. Cyrus elected that. That's why he made him king. Well, it's not technically king, it's a ruler. Who cares, all right? Didn't you remember that? Okay, remember in your long time ago discipleship class about these kings during that time? They were more like uh, rulers over a city or a region that time, right? Yeah. So, come on, just use your head. Just use your head. Now, if we continue on over here, there's an interesting... Uh, tablet called the British Museum Tablet and I'm gonna read the quote over here and I'll give you the number it says the following about this fulfillment of prophecy with Cyrus giving it to Darius his name was actually Gubaru Gubaru now if you look at this name, no wonder there's a similarity with the relationship with India and Persia, right? From the Aryans. See that? All right, but let's look at over here concerning about Gubaru. In the month of Tashritu, at the time when Cyrus battled the forces of Akkad in Opus on the Tigris River, the citizens of Akkad revolted against him, but Nabonidus scattered his opposition with the great slaughter. On the fourteenth day, Sippar was taken without a fight. Nabonidus then fled for his life. On the sixteenth day, Gubaru, Darius the Mede, the leader of uh, Guchium along with the army of Cyrus, entered Babylon without any opposition. Later, they arrested Nabonidus when he returned to Babylon. On the third day of the month of Arash Shamu, Cyrus marched into Babylon and they laid down green branches in front of him. The city was no longer at war, peace being restored. Cyrus then sent his best wishes to the residents living there. His governor, Gubaru, then installed leaders to govern over all Babylon. Now look at this. Gubaru started to set up leaders all over Babylon. If you recall in Daniel chapter 6, look at verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom what? And 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage. How about that? Bible always matches up with history every single time. This is at the British Museum tablet. Their number is 35382. Now let's go back to Daniel chapter 11. So then, who are these following kings? So, Dr. Henry Morris, who is known as the father of creationism, a scholar in his own rank, he mentioned in his reference Bible over here, and this can be compared with uh, the majority of a lot of dispensational scholars too. Larkin, for example, is one of them. Henry Morris, he puts it in this manner, which you can compare with Clarence Larkin and then Schofield as well. He says that the following manners are Cambyses, which is the first one, Ahasuerus here. Known also in terms of his title, Ahasuerus, Ezra chapter 4, verse 6. Smerides, 522 to 521 BC, also known by the title, Artaxerxes. Now, you'll notice that it was a small timeline for Smerides, 522 to 521 B.C., which is why, if you go back to Ezra, is very, very interesting. Did you read that? Or did you forget? Look at Ezra, how it did. Look at Ezra 4 again. Let's look at this. Ezra chapter 4. And then verse 6. In the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So they wrote a letter uh, to Ahasuerus. But then immediately after that, you'll notice over here, and in the days of who? Artaxerxes. 
And then they wrote the letter as well. They wrote the letter as well. So we see that within this small timeline that there were a lot of Persian kings that may have went, that just immediately followed. You notice that? You observe that? A lot of them noticeably followed. I mentioned uh, Hashuerus, which is Cambyses, went from 529 to 522 BC. And the Smerdis just went from 522 to 521. And Smerdis is the one who's known as Artaxerxes. And then you'll notice that Darius Hystapses uh, was the one that went from 521 to 485 BC. That's why he's mentioned at Ezra chapter 4, verse 24, and that there was, a, there was a distance of time, a length of time, when the work of the Jews was halted. But that was plenty of time during Darius' reign, because he reigned for a little while, actually. He reigned for a little while longer. Now, go to Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. The Bible says that the book of Daniel 11, the fourth king will be greater than them all through his riches and he's going to go and battle Greece, right? The famous Xerxes. Dr. Uckman mentions, as well as a lot of the dispensational scholars mention, that this Xerxes would be referring to the Ahasuerus of Esther. You, so, media, Persia battled against Greece. Their famous battle that was recorded in history books and the war tactics of the Spartans, and the Grecians, etc., on how they battled. It became a famous battle that movies started to display it. For example, the, two, the famous uh, 300, the famous 300 Spartans, who defended against to one million, one million of the mighty ar army of Persia. So that's the reason why the Bible says in Daniel 11, the king that's greater than them all, he's going to use his riches to mightily fight against uh, Greece. So this would be referring to Xerxes. Now, you notice how God is so interesting. It just so happens that with every worst king that you can think of in your Bible, the Lord will have one of his people involved in it and use it mightily for his glory. We see that with Nebuchadnezzar. God used Daniel to protect the people. And then Xerxes, the Lord used Esther. And later on in history, Genghis Khan, the Lord used the Nestorian Christians to maintain Christianity through China and possibly Korea. And then uh, I can go on and uh, King Henry VIII, William, uh, one of the worst kings of England, the Lord used William Tyndale's prayer where King Henry VIII was responsible for breaking off the Roman Empire. That was pivotal in our history. If he didn't do that, then uh, we wouldn't have America perhaps. So when, out of his arrogance, he broke off of the Roman Catholic Church Empire and then uh, made way for the King James Bible for us. You see what a brilliant God we serve? Yeah. Now, this is interesting, is that uh, Xerxes was uh, infamously known to have a harem of women, and it is said that after he lost his, uh, he suffered that devastating defeat, that he retreated to his harem. But uh, some scholars mentioned that it is interesting that Esther chapter 2, the king during that time where he banished Vashti, he had to gather up all the women in his harem and then pick what he thought would be his best wife that time. Wow. In Esther chapter 2, the Lord was like way ahead. Like he prophesied it. He knew, he knew at Daniel chapter 11 verse 2 and 3 what would happen to Xerxes and then he timed it right to send in a woman to save his people. 